now we got some idea about the switching behavior with respect to the design, preliminary ideas about the CD state error and the transient behavior. Now we want to see that if we move to approx uh, to discrete time domain, in addition to the practical implementation errors, what is the error which even theoretically happens when we move from continuous time to discrete time? That is an inherent error. It, it comes based on the approximations we make. Even if you remember, even with respect to spectrum of the signal, it was being convolved with a sink. So therefore, even for the first loop, which was the baseband, we had uh, distortion because sink is not flat. Sink, the first lobe of sink also starts dropping. And that was the reason oversampling ratio was helping to improve uh, signal to distortion ratio. So here, therefore, this is just a theory. And you may be familiar with it. But because we talk about the switch capacitors, we need to have an idea about that. And I found one of the best among analog references is the Ken Martin's book for this part of the course. That's why for module 22, we move on to Ken Martin's chapter, which is again switch capacitor surface. He has also a chapter, and then there he also talks about the S to Z domain. So some of the, of course, content I have in the slides may not be directly written there, but less or more you will find that chapter useful. So this is, in fact, a little moving now further, because still now it, we, without talking about the concept based on the, our understanding from track and hole, we were able to move on from track and hole to switch capacitor circuit directly, without talking about anything. Everything is in time domain, because we analyzed everything in time domain, and in time domain we were able to understand everything without really needing a theory in frequency domain. But now we need also to make it a little uh, more standard and systematic. That's why we need a theory in frequency domain. And that's why here we need also to look at uh, Z transform rather than just simply Laplace transform. The main reason is because we talked about amplifiers and buffers only, or track and hold unity gain circuit as well as discrete time amplifier. But we want to move on to filters as well, because this discrete time filters also can be used as a replacement of the continuous time filter. The same way discrete time amplifier can be used as a replacement of continuous time amplifier. And because for filters, we need really to look at the frequency domain. In fact, if you notice, today I also mentioned to you, Razavi has used the smallest domain analysis. I even don't use, didn't use it, because I just limited everything to time. But now we can move on to frequency. And then to move to frequency, we move to Z domain, because it's a discrete time domain. So we don't have the S domain. Now we want, when we want to move to Z domain, then it's better to start to see what will happen for S. And what will happen for the components that we have in continuous time domain, which are not just capacitors. Because in continuous time domain, we have resistors also. So therefore, the question is, what will happen for those components? But the point is that what we are doing in the discrete time amplifier, which directly we started from continuous time amplifier based on the capacitive feedback. But actually, we can go beyond that. And we can emulate a resistor also by using a capacitor, and therefore get more number of functions. And this emulation is simply done by notion of looking at charge rather than current. And that is the reason we can move from continuous time to discrete time. In continuous time, we have, we watch current continuously. And therefore, elements which allow to current to flow will have uh, a place, a, uh, a role to play, and then therefore we use them, like resistor. In discrete time, everything is looked at a particular time. Therefore, there is no notion of flow of charge. We cannot use that because flow of charge deal with the dq by dt. And dq by dt cannot be observed in discrete time. Therefore, we need something which can be steady in discrete time. And that's why we replace dq by dt by q in discrete time. That means that if I have a resistor which can conduct the current through itself, 
I need to replace it by an element which models the same effect but in a given time and therefore I need to have a to look at charge. A charge is integration of the current. So therefore now the question is that this may produce error. Therefore what we say that in principle we make the equivalent charge which is transfer to another element which could be a capacitor because when we talk about charge we have to hold it. It's a discrete time we have to hold it and therefore we need memory element. Resistor is not a memory element, therefore we use capacitor to hold the charge. What we can say is that the total amount of charge which is passed through this resistor over a given time interval is the information, not dq by dt at every given time. So therefore now we choose what kind of information we want to have, it's up to us in signal processing. So I define my information as the Total effective charge which is transferred to the memory element which is capacitor. And still I don't lose the information. Only I am making some approximations which still make it good enough to do the signal processing without losing the information. So that is just the uh, basic concept for that. And therefore now because I'm looking at the equivalent charge, therefore I see that okay, how I can make a some emulation of the resistive operation in discrete time. So therefore we are looking at the total charge. Therefore this delta Qn which is written here means that at time n I am looking at how much is the total charge which is transferred. Suppose for example I have a capacitor. I have two switches. I connect the top plate alternatively at phases phi1 of every clock cycle to some input voltage of V1. And then in the phase phi 2, I discharge it to ground. Now what happens here? Here I cannot talk about any current. I talk about charge. And then see that, see the information I have for this element is how much is the total charge that I store on the capacitor over one cycle of operation, which is controlled by the duration of phi 1. So therefore, I know that when I close phi 1 and if duration of phi 1 is high enough, almost V1 will be the voltage which will reach on the capacitor C, assuming V1 is constant. So therefore the charge which is transferred eventually from left to right is C V in N, assuming switch is ideal and I don't have any loss of charge. So but even if I have loss of charge, if I wait enough, the charge which is transferred to capacitor at least is C V in N. It may not be exactly the same charge which is taken from V1 because that charge may have gone some other place as well to charge the parasitic capacitors of the switch. But at least for C, what I have collected is CV in N, at time N. So I assume that if I would have had a capacitor, a resistor here in continuous time domain, therefore I keep a discrete time circuit, I keep a continuous time circuit. And then I see that my continuous time circuit works with I, discrete time works with charge. Now I will say that I will watch this circuit for one cycle of the clock. The two circuits will be watched for one cycle of the clock. For one cycle of the clock, how much is the charge I store on V in and then release it? How much is the charge which is passed through resistor R equivalent? So that's why by being connected to V in, which is value has value of V1 at this moment. So therefore, this is the way we define the equivalency. Therefore, the equivalent resistor of this operation is a resistor which will give you same amount of charge pass through it over time t. And therefore, equivalent resistor by just keeping these two sides equal appears to be t by c. And t is the period of the operation, period of the clock which controls phi1 and phi2 and c is the value of capacitor. So this equivalency now we keep in mind is defined based on charge. Total charge transferred or stored. It's better to call it stored because we will have parasitic capacitors. Total charge which is stored on the memory element. Total charge which is passed through the resistor and then transferred to the outside bolt or whatever. But we are concerned about the average charge 
sorry, total charge, which is passed through resistor. So this equivalency is defined based on charge. 